So I guess if I was having like a little scale, you'd be 50% done because you just completed part two of College 101 Student Orientation here at TC. Once again, if you have questions from any of those um, topics covered, email us at orientation at texarkanacollege.edu and check out our website at texarkanacollege.edu slash orientation to get important resources about what the presenters just discussed. This is the start of part three of College 101 Student Orientation. One of my best parts because it actually talks about the fundamental information that you'll need to be successful here. We have our Arriving to Thriving presentation that's done by Taniqua Martin, um, which gives you good information about time management, resources, setting aside the time you need to be that successful student. The Academic Commons is where we do our testing, where the library is located, where student support is located. All of the supplemental resources that you'll need is located in the Academic Commons. So they're gonna talk to you about that. We also um, talk about the disability services that we offer at TC. And then one of the things that we talk about here at TC is the importance of continuing even after you get your certificate or associates. And so our friends at Texas A&M University, Texarkana, put together some information about how you can transfer from TC over to the four-year institution to continue your education. And so enjoy part three of our College 101 student orientation. Well, hello everyone. My name is Taniqua Martin. I'm with the Educational Opportunity Center here at TC. Um, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about arriving to thriving. Um, so these are five key things that I believe if you do this semester will lead to you having a very successful semester. Um, number one is managing your time wisely. Um, this is going to be so critical for you this semester. Um, one of the things that I like to do is set aside time each week to block off in order to schedule my weeks. Um, so this is something I really encourage you to do. Take one day throughout the week and really look to plan the following week. Um, for me, this is on Sundays. I like to take a Sunday, I sit down, I think about the tasks that I have going on for the following week, errands that I have to run, um, all of those different things, and I plan it out for the week. Now again, you know sometimes things aren't going to be perfect, uh, but this puts you in a really good position to be successful throughout the week and get everything that you need to get done. Okay, Number two, establish a study routine. Um, so this is going to be critical for you this, this semester. Um, most of your classes are going to be online in some sort of format. Um, so it's going to be really important for you to stay consistent in your studying. Um, in order to do that, I encourage you Study at a set time throughout the day. Study at a set time and make sure you find a consistent place in your home or wherever to make sure you're studying. Um, typically, in a typical year, you're gonna be, you would be coming to campus so many hours per day to go to a class. It's not going to be the case right now with you being at home. So look for that consistent place. You know, for me, I have a room. Um, in my home where I go to for work and things like that. Um, you don't want to sit in any place around the house, study in your bed, study on the go, all of these things. You want to be as consistent as possible. So when you walk into that room or you walk into that space in your living room, that desk, you know that this is where work happens. This is where work happens, nothing else. Train your mind to get to that point um, and that's going to help you really be consistent uh, with your studying. Um, number two, begin each study session with a clear goal in mind. All right, this is going to be also really important. You don't want to sit down to study and just think, hey, I'm going to read three chapters in my psychology book. All right, I'm going to read three chapters in my psychology book. You want to sit down and say, hey, I'm going to read one to two chapters. I'm going to make some notes. I'm going to take note cards. Um, I'm going to look at, um, you know, vocabulary, um, different terms and things like that that I really need. I'm going to write those things down so that at the end of that study session, you can clearly see that you got something accomplished. But if you sit down and you just decide you're just going to sit down and go for it, a lot of times you're going to be wasting a lot of time. Um, think of math, for instance. I'm not going to sit down and study math. I'm going to look over my lecture notes. I'm going to complete numbers 1 through 20. Um, after I complete that, I'm going to go back. I'm going to check for accuracy. This gives you an opportunity to know that you've gotten something accomplished during that time. All right. Uh, the next one, be wise how you block out your time. Um, this is going to be very critical for you. Um, make sure if you're not a morning person, don't set aside in the morning to do your studying. If you're not a night person, don't set aside the night to do your studying. Um, for me, I'm one of those people, my creative hour 
my mind is most open uh, between eight and noon. So anything that I've got that's creative, I need to be retaining, I try to do that during those hours. Now again, that's not gonna be perfect. Some of you are gonna be in classes during that time. But find that time throughout the day that's gonna be optimal for you to retain information. All right, finally is build in some flex time. Um, so flex time, that's just that extra time just in case life happens and we know life is gonna happen. Um, many of you are working, you're going to school, you have children that you're shuffling here and there. Um, make sure you build in that flex time so that regardless of what happens throughout the day, you still have that hour where you can sit down and get your studying done. All right, um, here's two things that will really help you kind of get things um, going. Um, make sure you get a planner. So you can do this with a you know, paper planner or there's several apps out there that you can use. Um, this is one that I use during grad school to organize my classes. It's called My Study Life. Um, in that, you're able to block out planning time, reading time, you're able to set your task, you know when your tests are coming up, all of those things, just a really good app to use. It's free, you can use it as desktop version or you can use it on your phone. Another one is the cozy family organizer. If you've got children that you're kind of shuffling back and forth, um, going a lot of places, you've got a lot of different tasks outside of just your school schoolwork, then this is a good app for you to use to kind of help organize those things as well. Um, so look for those little tools and things that you can help um, to really get your day going in the direction you need it to go to make sure you can get everything you need to get accomplished. All right, um, so the next key to having a successful semester, actively engage in your live classes and class discussions. This is gonna be so critical. Uh, once again, when you're in class, you have that opportunity to really get engaged. How engaged you are in your class is gonna make, play a big deal into how much you learn. So it's really up to you to get engaged talk, speak, um, you know, ask questions, um, have those discussions with your, your classmates. So really get engaged in your classes. Another way, use Microsoft Teams for more than just your class lecture. Um, so it's a great tool here to help you create a study group. Um, meet with your instructors or academic advisors rather than having these phone um, appointments. Uh, meet with them via Teams. Um, also, have hangouts. There's different ways that you can do that. Um, you know, create a hangout group, create ways to network and really engage. Um, we're gonna have several different workshops and things like that throughout the semester that will give you that opportunity to do that. So really be looking forward to that. You wanna make sure you stay engaged with your instructors, your classmates, and the entire campus community. Um, next, monitor your email for those workshops and seminars that um, I spoke about. Again, we're going to have a lot of those from scholarship workshops, career planning, uh, resume building, different things like that. So uh, really look for those opportunities. All right, the third key um, to a successful semester. Um, and, you know, I said a lot of things are important, but this one is, is really the key here. Um, you know, the biggest barrier to academic success is finances. Um, it is for everyone. So um, it's really a great time to kind of look and take a really hard um, look at your finances and look at the things that you're doing financially. Um, number one, student loans. Don't mar borrow any more than you need. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk about student loan forgiveness. But don't bank on that. All right, you really have to be careful with your student loans, making sure you're monitoring that. Don't take out any more than you need. If you don't need it, leave it where it is. Uh, but be very careful in that because eventually you're going to be having to pay that back. Um, and it, it will affect you in every area of life. Um, so make sure you're diligent when it comes to your student loans. Um, number two, stretch your student refund. Um, if you are one of those students that are getting a student refund based off a of Pell Grant, different scholarships that you're getting, make sure you stretch that. Um, so that's money that you really weren't counting on. I like to say put that in an emergency fund. Only touch it if you absolutely need it. Um, but don't go and just blow that on anything. Uh, make sure you're taking a hard look at the things that you can really use that for. Um, next, apply for scholarships. As I mentioned, we're going to have a scholarship workshop um, here coming up soon. Look out for that. There are thousands of scholarships opening and closing every single day. You really want to take advantage of that. If you apply for a scholarship and you don't get it, that's the worst that happens. If you do get it, that's extra money in your pocket. Um, so look for those scholarships. They're not difficult to apply for. Um, a lot of them don't have a lot of requirements. You just have to sit down and do it. Next, 
reevaluate your financial priorities. If there's one thing the last year has taught us is there's a lot of things that we can really do without. Um, so really, look through your expenses week to week, month to month. What are some things that you may be able to cut back on to ensure that you've got a little extra just in case something happens later on? Um, I did this, um, I guess, about six to seven months ago. Kind of went through, you know, my bank statements and things like that just to see what was coming in what was going out and something i noticed that i had started signing up for a lot of little things we think when you know it's cost four dollars a month here five dollars a month here that's not much but eventually those things begin to add up you know they didn't things like apple music netflix hulu all of these things um do we need all of them so really look at that. Um, as I started looking, I realized I wasn't using a lot of these things. Um, and some of them I was duplicating services. Once I finished cutting a lot of this stuff and I didn't cut everything, I found $80 a month in savings. Um, that's a lot of money when you look at it. A lot of different things that you can be using. Um, that's money you could be putting each month into your emergency fund. So really look to prioritize. See where you can cut funds. And here's the thing, maybe you don't cut it out forever. Maybe you cut it for the next six months or so. You need more time to kind of, um, you know, get into classes and dedicate to your studies, things like that from here until May. Maybe you cut it out during that time. How much could you save there? Um, so that's something to think about when it comes to reevaluating your financial priorities. Next and most important here, stay in school and diversify your skill set. Why is that important under making finan healthy financial decisions? That's important because that sets you aside. You know, there's a lot of people out of work right now. Some of you may be coming back to school because you're out of work. Um, that means the hiring pool out there continues to grow. There's more people you're competing for jobs against. The way to set yourself aside is to stay in school, earn that degree, earn that credential. So whatever you do, make sure you finish your degree. All right, the fourth key to, to success, if you need help, ask for it. Um, now here's the thing, we can't solve every issue that may come up for you this semester, but we can't even begin to try if we don't know that there is an issue. So if you've got academic issues, you're falling behind in class, you need tutoring, you need to drop a class, reach out to your instructor, reach out to your academic advisors and do it early. Far too many students wait until the end of the semester to begin asking for help. Ask early, know what your options are. Make sure you reach out and talk to us. If there are personal issues that come up, childcare, food, basic necessities, counseling, there's services, there's resources out there for you. Um, we know those are hard things to discuss. You know, it's hard to tell someone that you need help in those situations, but there are resources and we would love to connect you to those resources. So if you need help, make sure you ask for it. All right, and the final key to success here, remember why you are here. Always remember why you started. Visual, visualize what completion looks like. Be kind to yourself, and most importantly, finish. Again, I'm with the Educational Opportunity Center here at Texarkana College. Uh, we would love to help you with all of these planning things. We would love to help you with academic you know, planning. Um, if there are things that you need personally, you need assistance with, um, come to us, talk to us, we'll get you connected. Um, but just reach out. You can apply for EOC services by either just giving us a call um, or emailing us at eoc at texarkanacollege.edu um, or you can submit an application um, on our website uh, for the services. We work primarily with first generation college students but if you see anything here that you might need assistance with, you might need some guidance with, um, reach out to us. We will get you connected. If we can't do it within our program, we're going to find someone that can help you out. Um, so hey, whatever you do, finish this semester. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Tanya Mackey and I'm the Director of the Library and Student Support Services. On behalf of everyone in the Academic Commons, I want to welcome you to the TC family. Our mission is to be your support network for resources and assistance that you need from outside of the classroom. Whether you are taking online courses, courses on campus, or a mixture of both, we are here to support you. Access to all of the resources provided through the library and the tutoring center begins at the library website and you can find that link under the My TC pull down menu at the top of the TC homepage. 
Well, things might work a little differently this semester. Students still have access to all of the resources available. This semester, rather than browsing through the collection of books, students will search the online catalog to request books through email. Use the How to Request a Print Book link for instructions. You will communicate with a library staff member who will pull your requested books from the shelf and you will be given the option to pick up the books at the front help desk or through curbside delivery on Tucker Street. Through the A to Z list of electronic resources and library guides, students have access to over 25,000 electronic magazines and journals and 70,000 electronic books. The A to Z list lists the databases alphabetically and gives a brief description of each one, telling you which subject areas the resources in each database covers. The library guides organize content that is relevant to specific classes. For example, if you are taking an English 1302 class, that library guide lists and describes all of the library resources relevant to that class. This is an example of what our ebook page looks like. You can browse through featured books, browse by category, search by subject, or search by individual title and author. This database of ebooks is found on the A to Z list under EBSCO ebooks. In order to log on to any of the databases, you will need to use your MyTC username and password. This semester, we're asking students to make appointments for tutoring and library research assistance. You also begin that process from the library homepage. You do not have to make an appointment to come in to use a computer or to access Wi-Fi. Appointments are to meet with individual staff members for one-on-one -on -one assistance, either in person or virtually. To schedule an appointment, use the pull-down menu to select the staff member of your choice or select View All Staff to browse everyone's availability. You can also scroll through the web page to view schedules and specialty areas. Once you have selected who you want to meet with, then you must select a day and time. Next, you fill out your name and your TC email address. Other email addresses will not be accepted. Then you select if you want to come into the library for your meeting or if you would rather have an online session through Microsoft Teams. You will receive a confirmation email. Be sure to check your spam folders if you do not. If you are unable to keep an appointment, please make sure to cancel it so that that time is available for another student. Likewise, if the staff member needs to reschedule, he or she will communicate with you through your TC email. Another service that you need to be aware of is our TRIO Student Support Services Program. Find information about this program at guides.texarkanacollege.edu slash SSS. If you are a first-generation college student, meaning that neither of your parents received a bachelor's degree, then you may qualify for a multitude of free services such as free tutoring, free printing, events such as tickets to plays and other local productions, along with other resources designed to help you be successful. Please fill out the online application as soon as orientation is over to see if you qualify. We are only able to accept 225 students a year into the program, so don't wait to apply. If you need to print or make copies in the library, you will need to purchase an access code from the bookstore. We are not taking cash in the library this semester. Codes are available in two, five, and ten dollar increments and you can use your financial aid to purchase them. The final department in the Academic Commons that we will talk about today is the Testing Center. Testing Center hours, along with hours for the rest of the Academic Commons services, are posted on the same page where you schedule appointments. However, it is important to remember that tests are not administered an hour prior to closing. So if the testing center closes at 4 o'clock, and it does on Fridays, you must have signed into testing before 3 o'clock. 
In order to sign in and receive a test, students must have a photo ID, preferably your student ID or your driver's license. Electronics are not allowed in the testing center, and if you bring your phone in, you'll be asked to turn it off, not just silence it. When requesting a test, it is important that you know your professor's name and the name of the course. That is the only way for staff members to find the test that you need. As you can see, there are a lot of resources available in the Academic Commons. You will find, though, that the people in this building are some of your greatest resources. Do not be afraid to reach out and ask questions, either in person, through email, or through Microsoft Teams. That is what we're here for. Our priority is to make sure that you have the support that you need to be successful. So make it a point to connect with us. Have a great point to connect with us. Have a great semester, and we hope to meet you soon. Hello, my name is Tanya Blaze, and I'm the Director of Disability Services, Student Retention, and Testing here at Texarkana College. Let me be one of the first to tell you welcome to TC. We're really glad you're here. One of the jobs that I'm responsible for here at TC is the Director of Disability Services. So I just wanted to reach out to everyone and let you know that when you come to TC, if you have a disability, uh, it's your job or responsibility to let us know and you can self-declare that you have a disability. Uh, disabilities can be a wide range of things. It can be uh, physical, mental, emotional. Uh, if you're not sure if what you have is a disability, please feel free to reach out and just ask. If you would like to self-declare that you have a disability, the first step that I need you to do is to go to Texarkana College's uh, webpage. And at the bottom, there is a link for forms. If you click on forms, there is a link to one that is ADA Reasonable Accommodations. When you fill that out, it will submit to me and I will get it and I will then get in contact with you. Uh, you will also need to provide for me documentation of your disability. And when you call me or when I call you, we will talk about what that can look like. And we'll even talk about whether or not what you have is a disability that we can accommodate here at Texarkana College. But first things first, fill out that form and get in touch with me. Um, I'm in the office daily, so all you got to do is give me a call at 903-823-3349 or you can email me at tanya.blace at texarkanacollege.edu. And I'll be glad to talk to you and get you started on uh, filing for accommodations here at Texarkana College. Uh, another thing that I am responsible for here at the college is um, our food bank, our TC Cares. Uh, we do have a food bank here on campus that uh, Philip Parrish and I oversee uh, students going and getting to visit. This is done by faculty or staff recommendation. So you can um, come to me or you can go to your professor and just mention that you would like to have access to our food bank and they will refer you to me or to Philip and we will get in contact with you. When you go, you will need an ID and uh, your referral from your uh, professor or from, like I said, from myself. And we will get you uh, hooked up with our food bank, which we can visit uh, twice a month. We also have other fundings and things that are available for our students. If you are in need of anything, um, just reach out and I will help you the best that I can um, and put you in contact with some people uh, here in our community that may uh, address different needs that you may have. One of the most important things we want here at Texarkana College is for you to stay in school. And Sometimes when life happens, we need a little bit of help, and that's what I am here for, and that is what Philip is here, and here to help you in any, any way that we can. Um, I appreciate all of you listening to me, and again, my number is 903-823-3349, or my email is tanya.blace at texarkanacollege.edu. Looking forward to seeing each of you in the fall. Thanks. Hi, I'm Caitlin Sloan, coordinator of the Community College Transfer Center for Texas A&M University, Texarkana. I'm here to assist you as you prepare to build upon your associates. Preparing for transfer to A&M Texarkana. A few things that I think are really important for you to know. A&M Texarkana has a transfer center at Texarkana College. I'm always available to assist you, so please let me know if there's anything I can do to help. 
We have events every semester, such as a transfer workshop, Spotlight, and Eagle Open House. I encourage you to attend one, if not all of these. They're here to assist you and make sure that you're prepared to have a smooth transition. Campus tours. If you haven't been to our great campus, I encourage you to do so. That way you can see what the Eagle family is all about and see if it's the right fit for you. Degree audits and two plus two or articulation agreements. These are extremely important. And the reason I say that Whenever you're working on your associates, you may be doing general studies and plan to pursue a different degree at A&M Texarkana. That's okay, and that's how we can assist and make sure that your courses are gonna align and you're not gonna have any extras. So reach out if you're interested in a degree audit. Also, if you need a degree audit, we can do those your first semester and every semester after until you're ready to transition to make sure you stay on the right track. With COVID-19, we're doing a lot of virtual options, so please keep that in mind as far as events and appointments. Bachelor's degree program opportunities. I included these just so you could see what your options are, but I'm not gonna go into great detail on those. If you have questions, please let me know. Transfer admission standards have changed and will go into effect summer of 2021 these won't affect you as far as receiving your associate's degree. Um, it's just an update from 30 hours to one full semester after high school or GED completion, but I just wanted you to be aware. The 2.0 GPA requirement has not changed. How to apply. So this is one of the big perks of being a partner with A&M Texarkana for TC. This past year, we have updated our application process and TC students have a custom application. There's several benefits of this. You won't pay your application fee. TC is gonna send us your official transcript for you and it's a simplified application. It's a win-win for you. You can apply on our website, of course, as always, um, but I strongly encourage you to use our custom application. You'll receive this email whenever you have 45 or more hours, typically your last semester before you graduate. If you have any questions about that, let me know. But that is a great perk. Why you should be an Eagle. Again, partnership. There's lots of benefits of TC and A&M Texarkana being a partner. My office is at TC, so that's a convenience, of course. Also, like I just mentioned, the application is simplified for everyone. And there's two plus twos that make sure that you stay on the right track. We're number six of 20 best affordable colleges in Texas for bachelor's degrees in 2020, 14 to one student to faculty ratio, which is great for you because that's gonna make sure that you have that faculty interaction. That's not only good for you when you're a student, but also whenever you're going to apply for jobs and need that reference. Convenience, we're just up the road. Experiential learning. You're not just gonna have lectures and different things that you may think that you have at a university. You're gonna get a lot of interaction and experience throughout your learning at A&M Texarkana. Student support and opportunities. This one is really important. And the reason I say that, over the past few years, we've added a new program for transfer students. Transfer Student Services or iCare offers a lot of great opportunities and resources specifically for our transfer students. There's completion coaching, they have printing resources available. There's a student organization that's been created through that and a lot of other things. So whenever you go to transition, don't think that you're on your own or that there's not a lot of non-traditional students who are exactly like you. There's an office that can help you and give you the resources that you need to be successful and complete your bachelor's degree if that's what you wanna do. Campus life. We have a lot of great things for you to get involved in organizations, athletics. We have several new buildings on campus with different things you can get involved in, such as the Patterson Student Center, which has a game room and a lot of other great things. So make sure that you get involved and know what all you can do as far as joining the Eagle family. For more information, please reach out. I'm currently working remotely as a lot of people are, um, but always know that you can call me or send me an email and we can schedule an appointment. If you would like to schedule an appointment through um, the link that's listed, please do so as well. I hope you have a great semester and consider joining the Eagle family in the near future. Thank you. Unapologetic work ethic. Unapologetic work ethic. When I think about somebody who has an unapologetic work ethic, I think about Michael Jordan. And I don't want to think about Michael Jordan. I think about that flu game. I don't know if you remember a couple of months ago, The Last Dance came out. It, it was a docu-series that documented Michael Jordan and his drive to his last NBA Finals championship. And one of the games that he played was 
called the flu game. And Michael Jordan was sick that day. I'll never forget. Ahmad Rashad comes out and he's talking um, to the commentators back at the booth and he's saying, um, we don't know if Michael Jordan is gonna play. It's a game time decision. He has flu-like symptoms. Michael Jordan had the flu that day. Michael Jordan had the flu. And regardless of the fact that Michael Jordan had the flu, he was still gonna play. He had an unapologetic work ethic. When you have an unapologetic work ethic, you have high respect for others. You communicate because communication cuts down on conflict. You have passion and purpose that drives you. And your passion and purpose is also called grit. And when you have that, you're able to not only move forward, it makes you accountable. It makes you have integrity. It makes you have good character, an unapologetic apologetic work ethic is what Michael Jordan had not only that day but throughout his whole career and so I oftentimes when I think about an unapologetic work ethic I think about birds I do and I don't like birds but I do like the fact that birds have an ability to stay together and they're unapologetic about their business they're unapologetic about how they're going to fly and so if you ever notice that sometimes when birds fly there's always a bird that's the leader there's one bird that's flying and the others are catacornally flying beside that bird. And so that leader bird is leading the birds through to the next destination. And sometimes that bird that's leading, sometimes that bird's gonna get tired. And when that bird gets tired, it rotates out to allow somebody else to lead so that person can get rest. When you have an unapologetic work ethic, you are gonna get tired. But because you get tired, that unapologetic work ethic allows you to surround yourself with a team, a team that's positive, a team that's going in the same direction as you are. Those birds fly together and when they get tired, another bird takes place. Another bird takes the lead. Another bird is guiding them to the direction that they want to go in. And sometimes though, the birds separate. Sometimes there may be 15 or 20 together and then it may be 10. 10 may go in one direction and 10 may go in another direction. And I say that to say sometimes when you're going in one direction, some of the people who may be flying with you one way may not be flying in the other way with you that you're now deciding to go. If some people have to cut off and go in a different direction, let them. Let them go in their own direction because you're going someplace different. You're going someplace that could be at a different location that's going to provide different opportunities for you. So birds, they fly and there's always a leader bird and they always are regurgitating and they're always encouraging each other. That's what happened that day with Michael Jordan. Michael was tired and I'll never forget that three point shot that he shot in that game, which then took them to game six, which then gave them the championship. Scottie Pippen came right beside him. Scotty came and carried him to the bench because he was that exhausted. Sometimes when you have an unapologetic work ethic and you're surrounded by your team, they're gonna have to help drive you to the finish line. Allow other people to drive you to the finish line, allow them to carry you to the finish line because your unapologetic work ethic becomes contagious. An unapologetic work ethic will not just help you at your journey here at TC, it will help you in life.